There's a lawsuit going on right now in which a whole bunch of social media companies are being sued because they're saying that they're making uh, social media and the internet addictive to kids. And we were talking because Eugenia Cooney is in the news, right? With Because of Jeffree Star. Right. So um, a lot of talk about censorship with Eugenia Cooney because obviously yeah. her platform is very controversial. A lot of her videos are her showing off her emaciated body because she has severe anorexia and looks to be on death to do death's door. A lot of people have called for her channel to be taken down and uh, for her to be censored on social media for that reason. I'm sure that a lot of her viewers are children. She doesn't age restrict her content. Um, but haven't lawsuits of this nature happen in the past to no end? Yeah, I don't know what they're actually going to be able to get away and with. And it's but not just addictive for children. Social media is addictive for adults. It makes all of us behave so like, they, uh, they, like babies. The article basically says that social media is altering reality for for kids. Technically, any type of visual content is doing that. Television, like any anything in which you project an image to a person that has a narrative yeah. structure or some type of plot or plan is going to alter reality and be able to influence a person, right? right. The difference here is that the governing bodies uh, of these organizations, like the, the like TV has the FCC, right? Television, radio have the FCC. There's less stringent controls over the internet now because of lawsuits in which they ask about whether, you know, like Section 230, uh, publisher versus platform discussions. But what they seem to be getting into the most on here is actually more about like parental controls and the ability to control kids' access to social media. And I actually don't know how I feel about suing these companies. I really do think that this is the parents pawning off their responsibility of being present parents onto these social media companies because they don't want to take responsibility for the fact That's that they can't actually keep true. their kids from accessing things that they shouldn't be because they're, yeah. not, as, they're not as involved in their kids' lives as they should be. Yeah, I uh, recently saw a tweet from a friend of mine who is a parent and it was thought provoking. She said, it's crazy how all of us here knew the repercussions of giving babies iPads before it was being talked about a lot. And now that all those kids are in school, teachers are finally talking about it. Everyone on Twitter was like, hmm, this is probably going to turn out bad, but nobody listened. And isn't that isn't that the truth? Yeah. Yeah. They, they talk a lot about uh, robust verification processes to keep the kids. I said the best verification process would be to not allow your underage child access to something that can get them onto these platforms. Is that a little bit cruel? Because all of their friends are going to have them. How well, much do you it's want? It's not your just the risk of children coming across adult content that is present it's also i mean if they're you not talking your, about adult content here they're just talking about getting onto these platforms right but if you sit plus. your kid in front of an ipad where they pay, play candy crush for 10 hours a day i think that's equally going to be detrimental to their cognitive functioning and uh their ability to be socialized mm. in these developmental years so i mean I just think that the lawsuits are futile because the companies are always going to win. Yep. Um, Tuesday's ruling states that the First Amendment in Section 230, which states online platforms shouldn't be treated as publishers of third-party content, don't shield Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat from all liability in this case, says Judge Gonzalez Rogers. He noted that many of the claims laid out by the plaintiffs don't constitute free speech or expression as they have to do with alleged defects on the platforms themselves. That includes having insufficient parental control controls, no robust age verification systems, and a difficult account deletion process. Uh, the most robust parental control you can have is to have a good relationship with your kids in which you know what they're doing with their time when they're young. Yeah. You're not going to be able to and, know where they're going, what they're doing all the time. But I, and I'm not saying that kids aren't difficult to deal with in these situations. I'm not trying to say that it's not a difficult job. I'm saying still, sure. it is still your well, job as a parent. Neither of us are parents. Yeah. So that's always the retort. Every time that parents who give their kids iPads, their babies iPads, get criticized for that, they say, well, once you're a parent, you'll know. Yeah, but I'm not once suing... you're a parent, then you'll know it's okay. But and I'm it's not like, suing Facebook. That's I, like... not the point. Yeah. Um, anyway, 
It says, addressing these defects would not require the defendant's change uh, how or what speech they disseminate, says the judge. For example, parental notifications could plausibly empower parents to limit their children's access to the platform or discuss platform use with the... Yes, they should be doing that. I do, however, agree with the um, the account deleting thing. It is... I, I, I recently disabled... Like, I've had a Facebook for however many... A decade, whatever, yeah. longer. But I haven't... Probably 15 years. But I haven't used it since 2021. And the process of, like... They make it impossible yeah. it's like to trying delete to, an account. It's literally. like trying to get rid of Amazon Prime. I've tried. And I yeah. made a Facebook when I was like eight years old, which is obviously against their TOS. I can do nothing about that now. Yeah. That's stupid. So they're right on that. Front. When I was when I was trying to I had to watch like a YouTube video on how to freaking find the place to, to, to no disable. Avail. No, I, I finally got it done. It took, <laughs> oh, it took, yeah. I, I've been like, okay. I've been like, just make sure no one can see your problematic Facebook posts. There are no problematic. 2010. Facebook. I, I'd like to think that I don't have any problematic. <laughs> I didn't have any problem problematic. I Facebook did for posts. sure. But yeah. And so when you when you draw this back to Eugenia Cooney, that's not quite the same thing as social media. But it goes to the, the question that people have is that should the platforms step in and regulate these things. Well, the the controversy going on with Eugenia Cooney right now is because she's hanging out with a fellow YouTuber, Jeffree Star. Mm. She made a visit to his Star Yak Ranch in Wyoming. Which Mary's been hanging very out with of. him. Yeah, I want to go. I want to try the Yak Burgers and hang out with Jeffree Star. That would be awesome. Um, but she's hanging out with Jeffree Star, who part of it is just the visual. He looks menacing and like a maniacal villain. She looks frail and helpless. Yeah. When you put them in a picture together, it looks like someone here is is the powerful one in the, this, this like friendship dynamic. If, but, we're be, if we're being honest, in this picture, Jeffree Star looks like a member of Batman's rogues gallery. <laughs> he looks like a villain and he plays into it. Yeah. yeah. But um, people are saying, you know, he's using you or um, these people are going to take advantage of you, Eugenia. Some of these comments say, uh, love you, glad you had fun, but please be wary of them. Another said, get them away, away from Eugenia, please. Uh, another said, none of these people care about you. If they did, they wouldn't ignore your severe issue. <clears throat> did it make you uncomfortable to sit next to Shane Dawson? After all, you admitted to him that you suffered from an eating disorder back in 2019. His documentary shatters the lie that this is your natural weight. You were closer to a normal weight in his video. Um, and the way I see it, that these pictures of her at a party, I'm more surprised that she is traveling and acting like an adult finally. But it feels like someone who is on a make a wish trip or on some kind of farewell tour before they leave this mm -hmm. world. And that's really sad, but it's the truth. Uh, that's that's what I see yeah. here. So if if Jeffrey wants to, you know, do do some charity work by helping her socialize with people and have fun for once, I guess that's a good thing. Is the idea that these people are completely okay with her being the weight she is, but they find hanging out with Jeffree Star to be just a, a bridge too far? Is that what they're saying? Well, he's been canceled a million times, okay. as has Shane Dawson. So they're seeing her in between these two social media villains. Um, and they, they see them as having ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. Which I, I don't mm -hmm. think they do, but what are they supposed to do? Like they can't save her only she can save herself and that People opportunity is almost that. lost it's one of the things like i'm i'm pretty good about not posting things that are like I, I like most of the stuff that i post on social media is just general humor and memes and stuff like that but there are certain things that i believe in that i'll post about that i don't feel like are very controversial but sometimes can elicit very strange responses in people. One of them is the phrase, nobody cares, work harder, which is very true, right? At the end of the day, there's that phrase again, at the end of the day, nobody really cares. Like, like all the success in the world and people will walk away from you in a heartbeat. And as much as people claim to identify with your struggle, whatever that struggle is, they can't really understand it anyways. So getting hung up on it isn't really something that a person can plausibly do. Jeffree Star can look at Eugenia Cooney and know that she's unwell, but she has free will. She's an adult. She can, I guess he could choose to not associate with her. 
out of protest because he thinks that she's but even that sounds morally grandstanding and stupid right? protest of what are we just supposed to act like she's not a exactly person? like what is the answer here there's no answer here if there's anything that could point her in a different direction it's having people that care about her yeah but close, i don't know if they do close but, people family friends loved ones who aren't just yeah. there because she makes a lot of money or is or is socially relevant and stuff yeah. like that i just i just don't understand this notion that he's I, I don't know what he is supposed to do in this situation other than whatever this was supposed to be yeah um and i think that maybe jeffree star's outlook on the internet and how to handle backlash might actually be a good influence on her because she clearly lets comments infect her. her mind whether it's uh positive ones or negative ones or people telling her that she needs to get help yeah. It's all fueling the addiction. And that's she said in this live stream where they were together, I see you guys are going to cancel Eugenia, but actually we've done that too. I've been canceled a million times. So we've already done that, guys. We're just doing our makeup and trying to have a good time. It's been so much fun. So whatever with what some of you guys want to say. How do you feel about um, letting comments get to you? Like, what, what is your approach to that? Just don't read them. Just don't read them? It's the best approach. Yeah. It seems like if she adopts an attitude that's more flippant about uh, online feedback, mm -hmm. that would actually be good for her. Yeah, if you like, they kind of. I've heard people mention this in live streams before. Like, even like, especially if you're in a live segment, the worst thing you can do is like let them see that it got to you because it's just going to inspire more of the same. She clearly right? inspires the sickest responses yeah. from people. Yeah. Because she's sick. And I and this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about the internet being the most dangerous thing that's ever been created in that human beings were not really designed to get instant feedback from people that have harsh takes, that have no emotional connection with them all the time. It's kind of like if you had a job and you were getting a performance review every day from somebody who just has no, not even from a boss who at least has like some incentive to want to motivate you for positive reasons rather than negative ones. Meaning like your boss has a vested interest in you doing better. So how he shares those criticisms with you actually matters, right? Mm -hmm. A good boss will know how to, uh, work criticisms into this discussion in a way that helps you rather than like emotionally locks you down. Right. So I'm um, now imagine that mindset or uh, now imagine that process, but without somebody who has a vested interest in whether you're okay or like, it's just people weren't designed to do that. And it's why I get where the bravado comes from. Like when people snap back at dickhead comments, I don't necessarily think it's the most productive thing you can be doing with your time, but I get mentally where the desire to do that comes from. I just think it's a waste of time because that's what Colleen Ballinger did in the ukulele. Video. It, makes no it was sense. her way to clap back at the haters and it didn't turn out well for her. And it makes no sense because the, it doesn't help public perception. It's and it's a weird power. It's, it's a weird power balance because you have a certain amount of power because you're allowed to be there in front of the camera and articulate however you want and you're the focus of the discussion there's a certain amount of power there but there's also a great amount of power and anonymity and the ability to do this to you uh on a on a live stage or in a way that can be publicly seen and i think that this is something as badly as i'm art articulating this it's something that's gone on as long as comment sections and message boards have been a thing and i don't know if i buy that there's any such human being who's found a perfect way of dealing with it. But the best thing you can do is to just not let it get to you as best you can, whether that's by not reading them or maybe you're, maybe you're lucky. Maybe you're just a sociopath and it just nothing affects you. That'd be great. I'd love <laughs> that's, that. Uh, that's probably why some of the most popular YouTubers do have sociopathic tendencies mm -hmm. or are maybe just full blown sociopaths and do crazy things with, all this backlash and all of this hate that they don't seem to absorb at all. Kind of like a CEO who's like, I like somebody I was talking to someone else. They said like, really, if you, if you intimately cared, if you actually cared about all your employees, would you even be able to do that job without becoming an alcoholic? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like if you have to fire entire divisions, what of kind people, of person do you have to be to be president? You or to be, to be Elon Musk. You have to be kind of sociopathic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you do. I'm jealous. I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> or, you, or you could be like a little bit autistic, like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> or, uh, or, or Musk. 
Yeah. yeah. It's like a mix of the tism with the sociopath. Well, we, need the we need Theo Vaughn in here to talk <laughs> about the tism. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.